All right, welcome to my presentation today. My name is Jimmy, and today I'll be talking to you about UI Table View. And in particular, how do we uh, code our app in order to get that uh, super smooth scrolling effect in um, UI Table View? All right, uh, just some quick information about the content on my presentation. So first, I'll give you a quick review of UI Table View class and also UI Table View cell. Um, and then I'll go into a little bit of discussion about how um, all these views are actually layered back and how rendering are done on iOS. And then following that, I'll talk about various bottlenecks that uh, we'll see when we uh, try to achieve a smooth animation on iOS. And also different strategies that we can adopt specifically for our table view cell in order to achieve um, smooth scrolling. Good. All right, so the first question that uh, I wanted to ask you is, why is smooth animation so important? Um, anyone wants to try and help me out here? User expects it at this point, so good. Right, so um, maybe I should, I should phrase my um, question like this. So what actually makes iOS devices so popular? and why people love using iOS devices. Hint is up there. <laughs> yes, the map is part of the reason. Yeah, your first of the thing is actually really responding to what you're intending to do, not, not straight to the wayfinder. It's like you're directly manipulating it on the screen. Yeah. Spot on. <laughs> that was the answer I was looking for. All right. So um, part of the reason why iOS devices are so revolutionary is because um, they make you feel like you're actually um, touching the content that you are playing with. So it makes you feel like you're actually manipulating it with your own fingers. And in order to achieve that, in order to give users that kind of experience, we need to have um, realistic physics and also really smooth animation. So that, that is how you can provide that great experience to our user. Right. So let's take a look at some of the uh, great example here. So um, the app on the left is called Flipboard. I'm sure some of you have used it before. If you haven't, it is a great uh, news consumption app. It sort of collates um, news from all of these various different sources. And it presents to you in a kind of magazine or newspaper-like layout. Um, and it has a really nice animation is if you flick your, your thumb up and down, and uh, the page actually flips as if you are moving it an actual sort of page or a board with your, with your thumb. So the animation makes it feels like you're actually flipping through a magazine. Another classic example is the GarageBand app on um, iPad and I, iPhone. Um, in, the, in the GarageBand app, there is a guitar tool. And the strings on the guitar tool actually behaves or it tries to mimic the behavior of actual guitar strings. So when you, when you lay your finger and you move it around, um, the string vibrates, the string moves around, and it really gives user the uh, experience that they are playing with an actual guitar. So it also makes it easier for user to learn your app and how your app, how they can interact with your app, because if, you, if the app sort of resembles an actual physical item, um, people have some sort of previous exposure to that item, it helps them to um, interact with your app. It helps them to learn about your app. All right. OK, I, so I hope I've convinced you that um, smooth and responsive animations provide people with uh, great user experience. However, these things doesn't come for free. So um, developers actually work really hard um, in order to achieve these great performance, in order to, provo to provide us with all these great animations. So that brings us to what um, I'm going to talk about today. If the animation comes in. <laughs> nice, OK. So the topic that I want to talk about today is obviously UI table view. Um, the reason why we focus so much on UI table view because it is probably the most widely used class in UI kit. You can see it everywhere, and pretty much uh, every app 
that Apple shipped you know, comes with some sort of table view built into it. Um, it is also very useful um, when we need to present a list of information to the user. Um, we want them to be able to scroll through the, uh, the information, to jump through different sections easily. So table view gives you a lot of these um, features. Um, it comes built in with UI table view. The other thing that makes UI table view really popular among developers is it is also very flexible and versatile. So we can customize table view to have different forms and shapes. So every app you see here uses some variant of, of table view. So for example, the weather app, you can see on the bottom left, uh, it uses table view to show you hourly report on the weather. Um, the iPhoto app uses table view, some sort of table view to show you um, all your photos, all your photo albums. Um, the App Store uses table view to show you, you know, a list of all the apps that are currently on sale. So um, they might not look exactly like table view, but because they are presenting uh, a list of information to the user, a uh, table view can be adopted, uh, can be adapted to, to present those informations to the user. All right. Cool. So a uh, quick intro to UI table view class. Um, you can think about UI table view as a container. So it contains a list of uh, UI table view cells. Um, and because the cells uh, can be larger than what the device's screens are, so the table view will, will obviously have some sort of scrolling mechanism. And that allows users to scroll through all these um, cells that it is displaying or it contains. So in order to provide uh, the information to be displayed on a UI table view, uh, you need to implement, so the table view actually gets help from two different sources or uh, protocol objects. So uh, the first thing is UI table view data source. So data source gives a table view all the information it needs to be displayed. For example, all the cells, um, all the different sections, uh, the height of the cells, all this information about how um, information should be presented. And the delegate actually tells table view um, how it should behave. So what should happen when a user tap on a cell? Uh, what, should hap what should happen? Or should the table view allows editing? Should it allow cells to be reordered um, by the user? Um, because UI table view um, asks these two objects for information, it is important for you to implement these uh, methods that are used by table view to be as efficient as possible um, within these two <coughs> protocol objects uh, in order for your table view to be efficient as well. So bear that in mind. So let's take a look at how scrolling actually happens in, in UI table view. So imagine the red. Everything in, within the red border is your screen. So when you try to scroll down, um, table view will actually ask the data source for a new cell to be prepared um, for, it to be, for it to be scrolled down later on um, if you continue scrolling down that, uh, that direction. Let's just see that again. Yeah, so it asks for it to display, uh, to be prepared, even though it's not exactly on the screen yet. So um, it is important for you when you are implementing uh, your UI table view data source, it is important for you to create those cells as, as efficient as possible because if you don't prepare it in time, the table view will lag behind um, because it is, it is waiting for the cell to be ready um, to be displayed. Okay? All right. So, uh, let's move on to talk about UI table view cell. Understanding what UI table view cell has is important because when the user is interacting with a UI table view, um, it is mainly you, what you're doing is mainly switching or moving, shifting these UI table view cells back and forth on and off the screen. So um, here we have a plain table view cell. It has an image view on the left. It has a two labels um, in the middle. 
and it has a button on the right. So it's a pretty standard normal table view cell. So let's take a look at how um, it is layered or how, how many subviews it actually has. So conceptually, a standard UI table view cell should have four, um, four layers. So I need to be careful about layers here because I'll be talking about CA layer later on. So these are conceptual layers. They're not actual CA layer. OK, so at the very bottom, you have your cell, which is just a plain UI view. And then on top of that, you have your background view. So that provides you a background for the entire cell. It also changes depending on the state that your cell is currently at. So when your cell is selected, um, that will change to have a different color, uh, for example. And then on top of the content, uh, on top of the background view, you have your content view. So content view is probably where you should put all your payload. So it basically acts as, as a container for all your payload. So your payload is where is which where we put all us our sort of UI component into. So the image view, the labels, and the controls can go into the, the content view. All right. OK. So now that you know it's so, uh, we have sort of all these different views in our cells, um, I need to tell you a little bit about how these are rendered and how are they displayed on the screen. So views are actually layered back on iOS. That makes it really good um, when we are an animating things onto the screen because if we don't change the stuff, um, the CPU can handle the, sh uh, the pixel shifting for us basically for free. So we don't have to do anything in terms of CPU us. So what do we uh, usually do is the CPU handles creating the layer, so it allocates memory, initializes it, position the memory, uh, posi position the uh, views, uh, layers, um, and then it hands all that information off to the GPU. The GPU composites all that layer together and, uh, and renders onto the screen. So this is how it's, it's usually done. And so just to illustrate the point, so the CPU, on, th on the CPU side on the left, you have the CPU generates all these different views. Uh, it positions them. It adds them into the, the right side view, creates the correct hierarchy, and then ships them off to your GPU. The GPU then um, do its magic and displays onto the screen. Right? OK, so because we, are, we have you know, the CPU and GPU here, um, it is important that we try to keep a balance between uh, these two processes. Because if we try to do too many things in our CPU, the CPU won't be able to uh, create the cells fast enough to be shipped across to the GPU. Uh, and then the GPU, the GPU will be just you know, idling, waiting for that to be handed off to him. And if you try to offload too many things to your GPU, for example, if you have thousands of layers, your GPU has to do all the composition. Uh, it's very expensive for the GPU. Um, so the GPU will lag behind, even though your CPU has got nothing to do. So it's, it's kind of a tricky situation. And uh, so you, when you apply some of the strategies I'll talk about later on, you have to think about what bottleneck you are actually facing at the moment, whether it's a GPU bottleneck or whether it's a CPU bottleneck. All right, so yeah. So um, when we talk about smooth animation, you know, like that. Uh, <laughs> um, so I just wanted to have some sort of uh, you know, figure that we can measure here. So uh, all the animations on iOS is actually kept at 60 frames per second. So if you think about that, uh, if you're actually drawing every single frame, you don't actually have a lot of time to process each frame. So that basically gives you about 16 milliseconds. So uh, if you... Um, if you think about that, you have to create your cells, you have to you know, do all the rendering, you really don't have a lot of time. So what uh, I'm going to tell you will hopefully help you a little bit in terms of um, creating a, a smooth animation. So if, you, if you're serious about creating a, a great sort of experience or good performance, 
Um, 60 frames per second is probably what you should be aiming for. You know, somewhere above 55. Yeah. OK, so what can we do to achieve smooth scrolling? Um, the first sort of strategy that we could use is uh, to cache computation. So one of the things that TableView asks from its um, data source is the row heights. So, um, so UI Table View actually is um, quite smart. It doesn't actually create all, every single cells in the row, so it only creates them when, you, when it's about to be displayed. So it creates them lazily. That's how we call it. But in order to get the entire sort of content size of the, the Table View, it will actually go to your table, uh, table View data source and ask it for the height for every single row in the Table View before it creates the view. So if you have a very expensive calculation in your height, it means that your table view will take a long time to be set up. So you want to avoid that. So if possible, um, pre-calculate all the heights and you know, cache them so that you can return the height very quickly. This shouldn't be a problem if all your cells are sort of like a static height. So this should be nice and easy. Um, the second thing that you should cache is um, computations during your um, cell setup. So for example, some of us do some pretty tricky calculation about your frame size and you know, where you should position things when you create the cell. So if, you, if you're doing some sort of expensive calculation there, make sure you cache them or pre-create those um, frames um, before, the, before you create the cells. So when you create the cell, that can be done as quick as possible. Right. Um, this uh, second trick is uh, probably enforced by the template that Apple uses in Table View, but a lot of people actually try to override it as well. I've seen it in, um, actually in real code that people, people write. So this is um, recycle use cells. So Table View actually tries to do that for you. When you create a new Table View cell, uh, Table view controller, uh, in, your, in your data source, whenever you're creating a new cell, it would actually put in this method called there for you. So it tries to make you do this DQ reusable cell with identifier. Because if memory allocation is very expensive, you know. So we try to avoid doing that as much as we can. Um, so if you, don't, if you don't reuse a cell, it means that every time a new cell has to be displayed on screen, you have to go through the entire allocation. You have to go through the entire cell setup again. So you want to avoid that. So you try to reuse this. This is, you know, Apple tries to encourage everyone to use it. So just don't fight the framework and just, you know, use what Apple provides you. Um, the other thing is try not to re-initialize everything you've created during your cell creation process. So I've seen people, um, they have you know, set up the frame of the views, they set up the colors, they've set up the font, but they redo it again every single time. Um, cells is, is asked from the table view. So that is also quite expensive. Basically, you want to make your cell for row at index path as short as possible, as quick as, as you can. All right. And um, I've also thrown in this new method there for iOS 6. Um, if you use Storyboard, you can pre-create the entire cell on your Storyboard, and then you just call it with the right identifier, so with a, yeah, for, for index path. OK, so this um, second strategy is to avoid, oh, sorry, I should mention it. That previous one is to avoid uh, CPU bottleneck, because you're trying to reduce the amount of setup work you do when you are presenting, when you're creating a cell. Um, the second strategy is avoid misaligned pixels. So beware of code like this. So um, for example, if you're trying to put something in the middle of a view, you might want to do this, you know, width divided by two, height divided by two. Um, be careful with that, because if your frame is odd number, that would actually introduce fractional width and height. And if you have fractional width and height, um, it means that your view is not aligned nicely on the pixel grid um, on the device. It also means that the GPU has to do extra anti-aliasing and 
it introduces extra load on both your CPU and GPU because your, your CPU now has to deal with fraction um, calculation. Your GPU has to do anti-aliasing for you, right? So a good way you can protect yourself from um, having this uh, problem is to use either floor or, or ceiling. So that would just round it up nicely for you. You can avoid that problem, all right? So uh, it depends on the situation. In some situation, you may want to have it to be you know, a fractional. I'm not sure, but uh, for general cases, you're pretty much uh, safe by using floor or ceiling. All right, so the simulator actually has a pretty good uh, tool um, that I'm going to show you now on detecting misaligned pixels. So if you have misaligned pixels, they'll be, uh, they'll be colored in a sort of like a pinkish, purplish pink tint. So you know that that view is slightly sort of off the misaligned, and you should probably think about fixing it um, to help with the performance. So speaking of that, I'll switch over to my Xcode, and I'll show you how it looks like. So for demo purpose, I've actually created I create, I've created an app that allows you to, that looks like the uh, old App Store app. It has some fake sort of app information, uh, and you can scroll through it. You can see that the animation is not very smooth, even on a simulator. It's kind of blocky, so a little bit jerky. Um, Yeah, but it, it's, it's a pretty standard table view. So it has an image uh, on the left, has some labels, has an image view down here, has some label here, and a label here as well. So pretty standard. Um, so what I'm trying to um, show you now is what happened if you forgot to uh, do reuse properly. So I might get one of you to come up here and help me out with the demo. This. It's not my table view. Okay. Um, just go to the camera app and like re record the video. I just record. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> I don't have to record. Just like hold it there so that it, you can look at the screen here. Oh. Uh, okay. I've never tried this before, but let me see if it works. Okay. Cool. So, uh, yeah, so we're looking at an actual iPhone here. Uh, so I'm going to build it on my phone. Yeah, it's because the uh, 4 doesn't have, like, mirroring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. I should have thought about that. So I've got some um, defined macro set up here. That's, uh, so I'm going to turn off reuse cell. So uh, I'm going to run the app with... instruments, just to show you what sort of CPU load we're getting if you forgot to um, 
implement reuse cell properly. So I'm going to run the core animation template. So you can see here. No? Oh, sorry. Yeah, cool. That should give you. So you can see the frame rates are actually pretty bad at the moment. And every time I scroll, there's actually. Uh, There's actually a quite a high CPU load because the CPU tries to allocate memory, tries to initialize the cell. There's a lot going on every time a new cell has to be prepared to be displayed on the screen. All right. Okay, cool. Okay, so let me show you what happened if you turn that on. really difficult to do all these together. So it's hard to compare it, but you'll see that the CPU usage actually gone down a little bit more. Um, and the frame rate doesn't improve a lot. We'll probably have to fix it up later on as well. I've also got a new photo from Desmond. <laughs> <laughs> of us. All right. Okay. Cool. So let me continue on with my presentation. I'll talk. To oh, let's go. I would also need to show you. how things look like when you have misaligned images. So you can see here, I've actually gone through all my um, subviews and make them sort of slightly off the grid. So you can see they're all sort of highlighted in pink here. So this is something that you don't want to see in your table view. If you see them um, highlighted in pink, you'll want to fix them um, by making them sort of fall onto the actual uh, grid. So I just have a flag here that says, turn, use misaligned views, turn it to zero. And if you run it again, you see that that disappear. So it's a, it's a contrived example because basically what I did was I go through my uh, views and I basically just nudge them, you know, 0.3 pixel off to the side for every single one. So you probably won't have the same problem as me. That can be fixed that easily. But the tool is there, so it can help you to debug your app. Right. OK, so the next thing that I'm talking about is probably more sort of relevant to everyone. Because um, especially when you have a, la a UI label that has clear background or anything that has a clear background, you would probably probably run into this problem of having blended layers. So blended layers are expensive because it requires a lot of work from, this, from the GPU side. The GPU has to figure out what is the underlying color and what is the color on top, and has to merge them together in order to figure out what is the the final color that it, it is going to be displayed on, on the screen. So if you have a lot of sort of translucent layer stacked together, that induces a lot of strain on your GPU. So a good way for you to avoid that is you know, avoid using clear color for your background. If you know what your background color is, set your views to be that same color. That, that way it's opaque. This GPU doesn't have to care about what's underneath it. Um, you don't have to um, put that much strain on your, on your GPU. So um, what I've shown you just now, uh, 
it's a view that is uh, it's a badly created view. It has a lot of blended layers. Um, so the simulator actually has a feature that highlights them in red for you. So let me show you how it actually looks like on here. So if I go through my root view controller, uh, sorry. You can see that all my, uh, all my sub views are currently having a clear background. So it's heavily blended. Um, which also explains partly why this app is scrolling so badly at the moment. Um, so if I turn that off, um, you should see that a lot of it, I've, um, I've started setting all the labels to the ex exact background color. So that reduces the amount of blending that is required. Um, but for a certain part, it's unavoidable because you know, some of the images actually has transparent in it. So some of the PNGs has um, transparent in it. So you can't avoid doing that. And also due to um, sometimes when you're applying uh, effects onto layers, such as you know, shadows or borders, um, they introduce extra overhead as well, um, which is shown here as well. So that introduces another um, transparent, transparent layer on top of those views. OK. So you need to avoid that. And um, the other thing that you could do is you can minimize the number of views in your cell. Um, this, is, this is probably the, the holy grail for having a smooth animation. So, uh, if you reduce the number of views in your cells, it reduces the number of work that the GPU has to do in terms of uh, composition, in terms of you know, blending. So that really in improves the scrolling performance of your, of your UI table view. The other thing that you need to consider as well is uh, whether do you really need all these extra effects on your layers. So for example, do you really need those extra shadows um, that will have, you know, that needs blending. Do you really need that extra, uh, you know, borders around your frame uh, of your image? Um, so you can try to design your app so that it doesn't require all these heavy lifting by the CPU and GPU, um, but still have sort of like a visual appealing, visually appealing app. Um, one thing that you have to be careful while you're doing this is. Um, if you're compositing your views using direct drawing, so draw rack, so draw rack al allows you to uh, manually draw the entire uh, the entire view yourself. So if you have, let's say for for my example, I have an image view, I have a couple of labels, I have a I have an image as a control. I can manually draw the entire thing and then flatten them as one single layer image, right? So as far as GPU is concerned, my entire cell now becomes one single view. It has one single layer. It doesn't have, the GPU doesn't have a lot to do when you're scrolling. It just kind of shifts the pixel along, and that, that's how you get great performance. But um, it basically means that you have to implement a lot of the drawing code yourself, and you also lose some of the benefits you get by um, by creating your view using all these different individual subviews, which I'll show you um, now. So in here, um, I've actually set up my table view so that it uses individual subview cell now. So I'm going to turn that off and use composite subview cells now. So what composite subview application cell does is you, so this is what I was talking about. In the views draw rack method, um, you can basically in, um, do everything you want here in order to create the view. So I'm drawing the icon image view here. I'm drawing the labels manually here. Um, all these different labels. I'm drawing the ratings image view. Um, 
So you have to do all these um, drawings now yourself. Compared to um, my individual subview application cell, you just kind of set them up, set up the background, uh, the background color, uh, set the text, and that's all done for you, right? So it adds a bit of complexity to your code, but you get a way better scrolling performance. So I'm going to show you one of the the gotcha you get. So let me just turn on slow animation here. Uh, so one of the things you'll encounter is when you try to turn your phone, you notice that how the view sort of stretches to the actual uh, length that it's going to be when the phone is in landscape mode before the animation animates it correctly into place. So let me show that to you again in portrait. So it's going to squeeze the entire view before it animates it into place. You, you'll never get this when you're using individual subviews because uh, the G, your entire cell now becomes a single image. You can think about it as a single image. And uh, when, you know, when the frame size changes, it basically gets, gets stretched um, to accommodate the changes. So you lose things like. Uh, like that, you know, all the resizing things you get for free when you're using individual subviews. So you need to be careful. It also means you have to do a little bit of work to get them fixed. Um, yeah, it's, it's possible, so you can fix it. So if I apply the fix now, you see that it kind of, yeah. So it means that you have to be careful with things like that. Um, with certain things, you might, you know, sometimes you have to get the highlighting yourself as well, depending on the state. Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, by, by drawing it manually, you kind of get really smooth animation, but you also lose the flexibility of your content. So if your cell needs to change constantly, if it needs to be changed very frequently, you might not want to do it that way, or you might want to just to reduce the number of views, but not drawing it manually, because uh, it might not be worth your effort and you know, doing all the draw rack yourself. Uh, the other thing that you can try to do if you absolutely have to um, if you absolutely have to um, pre-made all these image views, uh, pre-render all your cells, um, is you can start pre-baking your, your views in the background. So you can offload all that drawing uh, routines into a background thread through GCD. Um, so and then you cache them once you finish creating them. So when your view is about to, do, to be displayed, all you need to do is you just need to set the content of your, uh, of your CA layer to be the CG image that you pre-bake. And it means that your CPU doesn't have to do any sort of work when it needs to be displayed. So that sort of saves you uh, some CPU time when you are trying to display cells onto, onto the screen. Uh, but with that, you also incur a very high overload in terms of your memory usage because if you're caching every single view in your table view cells, um, your memory usage is going to run pretty high very quickly. So uh, make sure you also dump the cache from time to time on when it's appropriate or when things has expired. You dump the cache so that you, know, you don't take up too much memory. All right? All right, so that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. <laughs>